All new Pacific Mornings with Will on 531PI. It is 835. This is Pacific Mornings on 531PI. I'm William Teresi. Now, Kiribati is probably the only country in the world where voters go to the polls to elect first their members of parliament and then their president. It has been two months since both votes were held following a turbulent period of strained relations with Pacific neighbours and tensions with traditional allies. Joining us to get a better perspective on Kiribati is the country's opposition leader, Tisi Lamborn. Māori, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your time. Māori, well. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, look, firstly, congratulations on your election to Parliament. How was that for you? It was quite tough, actually, uh, trying to um, compete with uh, candidates who uh, have more, more resources than than I had. Mm. Um but yeah, it was, was, was quite tough. Mm. And look, let's go there now with the presidential elections. We understand you weren't able to contest the popular vote. Why is that? Well, according to our constitution, the the maximum number of candidates for the presidential election is four. Uh, so three, um, not, not less than three and not more than four candidates. Uh, so if there are more than four nominations um, brought forward, then there has to be a sort of an elimination process. Mm. So during the uh, the nomination pro the on the thirteenth of September, mm. uh, there were six a total of six um, nominations brought forward. So the the Bani Party TKP nominated four candidates, and there were other two from. Uh, the opposition and and one from the opposition and one from the independent With so um so the elimination the tkp has a significant majority in parliament mm. so there are two rounds of uh, voting so each mp gets one vote for for each round and, and so that the top two candidates uh, are for each of the each round are declared the candidate. So um, TKP got all of its candidates through right. and that sort of prevented the others uh, like me and my other colleague on to get on the ballot. And so that's that's how it it happened. Yeah. With that in mind, then, is it is is, is, is that democratical fear? I mean, should the you know electoral system and the rules change? Well, you know, we haven't had a problem with this. Um, with, with with this process in the past. So this is the first time since 1979 when we achieved independence that that we have had this problem where uh, there are only candidates from one group or one party contesting the election. Mm-hmm. And the, the people were left with no genuine choice uh, to choose from, uh, from the, the candidates because all of them were from the same party and, and actually there was only one candidate that they were um, putting forward uh, on the TKP party. Mm. Okay, and look, let's switch tack now and talk about the president obviously uh, being re-elected. I really want to go there. Under his leadership, Kiribati has developed a controversial, closer relationship with China, um, which has been investing heavily in the Pacific Islands. Do you think, dare I ask, Kiribati's close ties with Beijing will come at a cost? Well, that's one of the things that we're concerned about. But let me say, Will, at the outset, that there is nothing wrong with being friends with China because China is, is a diplomatic partner like any other partner that we have. But I think the concern is the way that our government is managing this relationship. And um, uh, we there are lots of uh, yes, l- lack of transparency in, in the dealings, uh, government's dealings with China and and perhaps other things, uh, but but this is of concern to us because you know China has um, uh, the 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 Belt and Road Initiative. So that's yeah. that's basically um, the the way that it's um, it's provides support to its partners is through this program. And this is one thing that we're worried about is that mm. uh, we don't know whether we have. Um, uh, taken our loans with with China under this program we have signed on to this to the BRI um, but we don't know exactly what 
what we have um, uh, signed. Mm. We, uh, in 2022, um, the, our government signed 10 MOU with the, the Chinese foreign minister, who visited Kiribati at that time. And until today, we haven't been able to get government to, to, to tell us exactly what, what those uh, MOU are about. Mm. Uh, so, so this is uh, the concern that we have. Um, the government, our government, is seems to be um, going out of its way to, in in my view, to please China. Mm. And there, are the these things that we have seen, the decisions that they have made, that that really really concerns us mm. and I know if, if I can give you one, one very clear example uh, was that um, the, the Chinese foreign minister's visit to Kiribati in 2022 and this was during the, the lockdown so there were nobody was allowed in or allowed out uh, but during that time there were only controlled repatriation of our stranded nationals overseas mm. and most of our stranded nationals were seafarers who were trying to get home yeah. but couldn't because of the of the the lockdown now we had regulations in place at that time that for those who were repatriated back home um we only had one flight every fortnight because there was the only we had limited um quarantine facilities sure uh and so our regulations at the time um, required those coming into Kiribati to undergo two weeks of quarantine before they can uh, they can go out into the community. Yeah. Uh, once the the tests are yeah, they are negative. Mm. Um, but uh, in May 2022, the Chinese foreign minister visited Kiribati and did not go through that process legal mandatory wow. uh, requirement. And that's for, for me, that's something that's really concerns me that um, the government in, in, in my in my opinion, the government put our people at risk mm. for allowing people to come in without going through quarantine. And I think that's a concern. It's the way our government manages uh, relations with China is 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 the major concern. Certainly. And of course, we uh, I guess we we're worried that um, what we're seeing in the past four years um, have been uh, I guess in 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 our view the moves towards um, undermining democracy in Kiribati yeah and and that's yes so those are some of the concerns we have yeah I'm gonna ask you this and um, perhaps and it'd be hard to get a yes or no but I'm wondering if you will in terms of are you pro China I'm pro Kiribati. I'm pro Kiribati, and so what, whatever's good for Kiribati is um, is is what we will support. At any expense, though. Uh, no, I mean, of course, in in a diplomatic partnership, there's always something uh, that you you know you give. It's it's like it's a two way sure. uh, street. So you, you give something and you get something. I mean, that's. It's transactional in, in a sense. Totally. So um, there are certain things that we cannot uh, we cannot trade. We cannot trade our sovereignty and the democratic values and the the basic I guess principles that are important to us in Kiribati, yeah. cultural values. There are some things that are just the red lines. You cannot go over those. That's a great answer. All right, look, I, kind of all of that begs the question, though, what kind of opposition leader will you be? Give me a sense of what we can expect from you as opposition leader. Well, let me just say that um, I guess at this moment, I'm still, uh, I guess, technically opposition leader. But before the, the, the parliament meeting on the 5th of December, the opposition party, my colleagues will have to, to make a decision mm. uh, whether to, um, to let me continue as opposition leader or select another uh, colleague to be opposition leader. Sure. But if, if, I, if, I, if I do continue in this role, uh, I think the most important role that an opposition um, does is, is to make sure 
to keep government accountable mm. for the, to the people. And I guess um, following the elections to make sure that the government delivers on the promises it make, it's made to the people during the election, uh, the implement its manifesto. And, and I think for, for the most part, just address the, the issues that our people are facing right now. Mm. And there are lots of issues that our people have uh, are going through um, for the past few years. Yeah, of course. Final question for you. Do you think, given that the president's been re-elected, we're going to see any changes in the way of things in terms of progress for Kiribati, or will we see the same policies and decisions? I guess personally, I, I, I'm hoping for a better, for for improvement in the way, uh, in in my view, in the way government governs and leads Kiribati and delivers on its uh, on its very important responsibilities for the people. Um, they have uh, TKP now has uh, quite a number of new MPs, and I, I, I sincerely hope that the new MPs will bring into TKP and the government now the positive changes mm. um, because uh, I think our concern and my concern is mainly to make sure that people uh, have medicine because it, those are the things that the, one of the main problems our people are going through is med medicine sh shortage. Mm. Uh, not enough money to, to pay for patients uh, to, to, to travel or to fly from the outer islands to Tara where the main hospital is. Yes. So referral uh, to Tarawa and also overseas, that has always been a problem. There hasn't been enough money mm. to meet the, the, I mean, the obligations of government, the basic services to the people, power outages on the main island, and the, lots of, the rising cost of living. I mean, the, these are the, I guess, among the main problems that our people are going through. There are lots of others. Mm. Um, but. Uh, we hope, and I sincerely hope that that the government puts the government the the people's need first. Yes. Because that is, uh, we've seen in the last four years. Yes. Certainly. We always argue that the government is putting its own interests before the people's interests. Right. So we, I sincerely hope they they. There are improvements in the next four years. Certainly. Well, we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Hey, thank you so much for your time. That is opposition leader Tessie Lamborn. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too, Will.